Good morning. It rained yesterday. It rained more than I thought it was going to rain. Um, we had about a half inch here, just under a half inch. But at Berkey, where my tractor is sitting in the field and we've got 100 acres of corn to side dress, um, I think we got like eight tenths. So now it's wet. Which isn't a bad thing. Like we, The rain is not a bad thing at all, but um, I wish I would have gotten done side dressing. So it is what it is. We are not going to be going down there today and uh doubtful for tomorrow maybe maybe sunday or monday although they're calling for more rain next week so um side dressing is not going to happen today so we need a rainy day project i happen to have one of those it involves these two old used disc plates I'll show you in a minute. I gotta accumulate some supplies. All right, so here is what I've got. These are old disc blades I bought off of the Landall disc. And um, I've got them, I cleaned it up a little bit. I've got some rebar here. I ground some points on one end, cut them. They're all about 30 inches long. So we have some uh, fields that have property boundaries uh, through them and um, well, we like to take, keep fence posts or some sort of marker where the property lines are, the corner posts. Uh, the problem is you can't drive over fence posts. And I saw this on, online, this idea where somebody had taken an old disc blade, <laughs> welded some rebar to it, pounded these in on top of where the corner post marker is, and then taken the fence post out. You paint this disc blade, the top of it, um, some bright, bright fluorescent color so that you can see it. And then while you can't do tillage through it, you can at least drive over it and it won't hurt anything. So I'm going to make a couple of them up. We're going to use them around my, uh, my lot for my seed warehouse and where our house is going. Cause I've got two posts there. They're kind of out in the middle that would be nice to not have there. And uh, we're going to see if it works. So what I'm debating is, do I just weld that surface weld it or do I drill a hole through so I can weld on both sides? I think I need to drill holes. And by drill, I meant blast a hole through it with the torch. So these disc blades are hardened on one side, which makes them rather difficult to drill through. I was able to get started uh, with a small bit and drill about halfway through and then nothing. So I tried the big bit and still nothing. So forget drilling it. This isn't that critical. We're going to weld the hole shut anyway, so we're just going to blast one through there. I'm burn off my cutting oil. Stand over here. Not big enough. These blades are thick. They're um, they're a quarter inch thick when they're new. So in the center here, where there's not going to be a lot of wear, there's still a lot of material there, um, which is good because that means it'll be fairly rigid when we weld together. There's my holes. And I've decided, so I don't want these bar to stick up through it because I want it to be smooth on top. So the hard thing here is going to be getting them relatively straight. So I think I can hang them, clamp them to the side like that. And um, then I can tack weld that on and we can flip it over and weld the other side good. I think this will work. At least for the first and maybe the second one. Might get a little trickier for the third one. We'll figure it out as we go here. Uh... Stick or wire? Stick or wire? Rusty old metal stick. Well, there's one. We'll get the other two here. Well, there. That looks kind of dangerous, doesn't it? So the idea is that I can just pound that down into the ground and the, the little marker pin will come right through the hole or be right in the middle so you can see it, but it'll cover it up so you don't have to worry about driving over it and poking a tire. Uh, we should be good. So I'm going to let it cool and we need to get some paint. So... I've got some errands to run here. 
this late late this morning anyway go get a haircut and stuff so i'll stop and grab some paint we'll see what kind of bright colors we can find that are going to last a little bit more I you know I, i've got some fluorescent orange marking paint but that marking paint doesn't last so i'd like to get something a little better than that and uh let's see if we got any primer in here we'll get it coated up good and then go pound one in make another one here this afternoon so when there's an accident on the turnpike and the road that's the best detour is closed traffic gets backed up for about two miles here i think we'll go around we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna take a little detour here i guess they're doing a little construction on the turnpike sometime somewhere between here and the next exit to the uh west but this is the third time in the last month that there's been an accident that has forced them to close the westbound lanes, at least the westbound, if not west and east, of the turnpike, and they divert traffic off of the turnpike at the state route that we are heavily travel, um, and then onto the US 20 across to the next exit, and it backs up like crazy. Not meant to handle that kind of traffic, so. Well, that turned into a rather long trip. But I got some fluorescent orange paint. Let's get that one painted up. We're gonna start with some primer and then give it 15 minutes and coat it with the orange. We aren't going for quality here, we're going for speed. Okay, while we wait for that to dry for a little bit, I'm gonna work on the second one. First thing is cleaning it up a little bit and then we got a drill our holes and weld it together nice and shiny got these cleaned i put some a relative point on them to make them a little easier to drive in and i cleaned up the ends that are going to get welded so that it welds a little bit better um, time for orange got the second one made up and the first one well we're working on painting it it got a little heavy and we got some sags but a couple more coats will fix that Whew, it's getting warm out here Dad's doing a little work on the sprayer. Some of our uh, nozzle bodies were blowing out, so he's putting a bunch of new ones on, at least the rows that he can't see. I'm going to check my stuff here, but give it another coat of paint. And i got to run to the post office before they close, so maybe I'll go do that. Well, that one, I got the legs all the same. That one, two are shorter than the other one, so it's a little off kilter won't matter when i pound it into the ground but anyway um got them painted up they will be good so i'm gonna run to the post office let them dry when we come back we'll go get them installed okay this is what we're trying to get rid of so when they they put a tile along the road here last year which is great because it drains everything but they put this catch basin in right here and this dirt has not gotten graded off very good so I can't drive over it with a lawnmower and I've got a row of beans right there and I'm tired I don't want to have to drive over them so the idea is that if I take this out and I replace it with one of those I can drive over it and then I can get in here to grade this off a little bit better too so um, that's what we're doing there is right there the property marker so the idea is to put the cap of that right through the center hole on the disc blade. Let's see how I do. Close! I'm off center just a touch. That's the cap, you can't see it. It's there, I promise it is. Um, that'll work. So, there's another one over there on the other side of the barn. We'll go do that one. I didn't I didn't hit that post when I was side dressing corn. No, uh-uh, uh-uh. It was leaning like that before I got here. Um, would appear we're gonna have to pick up a few rocks while we're here. Well, sweet. That will work. I didn't even have to use a sledgehammer to get that one pounded in. It just kind of jumped on it and it went. So we'll see if they stay there or if they move or fall out or whatever. I think it'll be good. So um tomorrow. My agronomist is coming up because I wanted him to come out and walk the plot and look at some stuff with me. And he kind of turned it into a agronomic training day for other dealers. So I think we've got a few people coming tomorrow to go through the plots and walk and look at stuff, which is good. Yikes. That's a shallow planted one. It looks terrible. 
Um, but anyway, so I think they're coming tomorrow. So we're going to plan on doing that tomorrow. And um, so I'm going to go clean up around my barn a little bit. I got some trash and stuff that needs to get burnt. So we'll go and do that. Yeah, look at this. So remember I did a uh, seed planting depth trial out here. This side was planted at one inch deep. This side was my normal two inches deep. And it's smaller, it's thinner, it's behind. But if you look at it, there's seeds that have just sprouted that are just coming up. They're way behind, they were sitting in dry dirt. So now you got all kinds of different emergences out here and stuff and that's gonna be, that's gonna be a mess. This place is a mess. I need to sweep the floor really bad. But I got a pile of trash to go burn. Started my fire over there. Uh, so this was some of our first planted corn. We're not gonna look real extensively here. I just wanted to show you that we're getting some size to it. Uh, let's see, so this would be the first leaf. So one, two, three, four leaf collars, which puts that at our four corn. That's, uh, that's moving right along. Um, next week it might be time for some fungicide on some of this early stuff, so that's good. Uh, let's see, I see something right here that's worth noting. <clears throat> you see these leaves and how purple they are? Now, there's a couple of things that can cause that. It could be a buildup of sugars caused by the cold weather that we had last week. Remember a week ago on Friday, we could go tomorrow. Uh, it was like 55 for high. We got down to 37 that night, and now it's 80 degrees out and going to be 90s tomorrow or well, Saturday. Um, so it could be that, or the other thing that it could be is a phosphorus deficiency. Uh, remember, I've talked about the reason that we put a high load of phosphorus in our starter is because phosphorus is sort of tied up and unavailable in cold soils early in the spring when this corn was planted. And uh, the phosphorus deficiency shows up as purple tissue in the leaves. So it could be a little bit of phosphorus deficiency showing up. Even though there's phosphorus in the ground, the plant just can't get to it. Now that it's warm, that'll go away real fast. The other thing that we are going to look at here real quick, because I'm sure we'll be back here tomorrow, is my beautiful, still alive and growing and thriving March 17th planted beans. Look at them. They're gorgeous. This is awesome. We've got a great stand. They look great. <sighs> Couldn't ask for anything better here. So that's that's good. We've got the second trifoliate leaves out. So these would be what we call a V2 bean. Here's the this one's got the next set of trifoliates coming out. Awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So I'm hoping, let's see, what's today? Today is June 2nd. I am hoping that within three weeks, we're setting flowers on these beans. So uh, June 21st is the longest day of the year, summer solstice. And the goal of planting early is to be setting flowers on that date and capture as much sunlight as possible between beginning flower and maturity. Soybeans need two things to yield really well sunlight and water and i can't really control the water and the sunlight you get what you get and it's basically the same every year um, so the way we can capture more of it is narrow rows so that you have more beans and the sunlight less sunlight is hitting the dirt and planting them earlier so that they have a longer growth window to capture that sunlight so that's that's the idea behind planting early is that you capture more sunlight and you give them more time to set flowers and pods and fill out the beans. All right, we did a little sweeping. It needs done again, but I got the heavy stuff off. Most of that dirt was from when Ryland decided to go right around the house in the mud. Why does my camera shake like that? Can you see that shake? Yeah, it drives me crazy. Anyway, um, I'm done. It's five o'clock. I'm gonna head back to the farm, wrap up a few things, and then we're gonna go home. We'll come back here tomorrow morning, clean up a little bit more before everybody gets here. They're supposed to be here like, 10 or something so we got a little time in the morning okay home we go i have a tree that is working on dying i'm hoping it holds on long enough for me to sell the house but i'm going to go trim all some of the dead branches and i have a trailer load of mulch sitting at my house that needs spread so we get to do that tonight mulched that that tree is that tree's in rough shape but we trimmed some of the dead stuff off i got a whole trailer load of crap to take out of here mulch mulch. We've even got a little garden. 
new border stones, more mulch. It's getting there. Take the pictures now. Let's see, where's that? Right about uh, there. Boom, take it so we can sell it. We use that picture in September. By the way, if anybody wants to buy a house in Pioneer, Ohio, this fall, winter, let me know. Um, anyway, I am, I'm obviously, I'm home for the night, so we're done here. Thanks for watching today. Uh, we've got that kind of little field day agronomy stuff going on tomorrow. I'll try and film some of that if we can, and uh, then we'll see what else is going on in the afternoon. I might get the little dirt scraper out and do a little scraping around my um, house foundation there and try and level some stuff off and do a little grading there, so. Uh, supposed to be hot tomorrow. Another good, nice, drying day. Maybe by Saturday we'll be back and doing anhydrous. I, that's kind of what I'm hoping right now, so we'll see. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a great night.